how much you'll have any input today as regards to delegation that are here with a view to taking over the club. Obviously, I'm guessing you didn't get a chance to speak to the Takaris yesterday, but will you get a chance to speak to today's delegation, Jim Ratcliffe? Uh, if so, what is your message to the potential new owners at the moment? I just met them, uh, we, we shake hands, but uh, I'm focused on the game and we play a big game uh, on Sunday, Fulham, and all our focus is on that and others in the club are dealing uh, with uh, potential investors. Just in broad terms though, is there anything you can say that you would like the new owners, potential new owners to bring to the club? No, my job is uh, in this moment focus on the game, so let's talk about the game, Fulham, uh, and it's, uh, it's a big tie. and. Uh, we have to get ready for that. How have the cup meant the cup competitions this season impacted the mentality within your squad? I, I think we have to uh, set here a culture, a winning culture. And um, we are Manchester United. We have to win all the games. We have to compete in all the leagues and to win all the leagues. So that has to be the mentality. It's not that you win all the leagues, but uh, the mentality is uh, when you go in a game, uh, we have to win the game. Speaking of mentality, and finally for me as well, Eric, Marcus Rashford, 30 goals this season in 48 games, including internationals, 24 in 19 since the World Cup. When others have dipped after that tournament, what is it about Marcus that he's been able to reach those kind of levels? Uh, he, he progressed um, during the season, and he was also not in the best shape when he started the season. Uh, but then I think um, the way of play uh, it gives him... Uh, a base and then he brings his skills in and then he brings his attitude mentality in and that uh, yeah, I see that is bringing him a lot of progress and that gives the team a lot of joy and gives us gives Marcus a lot of goals and us a lot of wins so Eric coming up to a, an international break where do you think Manchester United are in terms of their position in the league, you're obviously third in the league, but where do you think they are in terms of competing for the for the biggest honours, the biggest trophies? Uh, we have to, after Sunday, uh, I will set conclusions, uh, but we are, uh, we are now in three leagues competing and we want to stay in those. So Sunday is a massive game for us. And having won a cup at Wembley already, how much of an incentive is that to go back to Wembley in the biggest cup for us, the traditional cup for us, and, uh, and get there? Of course, it's huge motivation. We all really enjoyed Wembley. We all really enjoyed winning a trophy. And it, is, well, it has to be the uh, fuel uh, for the next one, uh, to uh, get pushed by that, uh, by that idea. And that has to bring extra energy to beat Fulham. James. Eric, um, we've seen with Marcus this season, his best season ever. Um, what have you done with him specifically? Benny, you brought in Benny McCarthy, of course. I wonder what, what role he's had because previous managers have said he kind of lacked that the that goal scoring instinct to want to get the the ugly goals, if you like. Is, it, is there something you've switched on in his head to change the way he's playing? Um, I think the most important is, of course, uh, the way of play. And that gives him base, gives him, gives him structure, uh, gives the team structure, and the way of play is um, uh, is in his favour uh, because I knew his skills, and then you also bring um, uh, staff around uh, who can um, who can make him better, who can make him progress, or he gets motivated from. And yeah, we uh, I thought we needed one in the staff uh, who is specific uh, uh, responsible for strikers and yeah, Ben is doing a good job but don't forget the others in the staff because it's it's about teamwork eh? and I think the staff is in a good balance and we do it together and it's not only about Benny McCarthy in that staff eh? it's about um, all have their specific jobs in our staff and I think we cooperate really uh, good together and there's a good vibe and also they challenge each other and therefore, I think it's the total package that I want to um, uh, I want to report here, and it's not all about one person. Hello. 
Hi Eric, um, Andreas Pereira has played obviously played really well for Fulham this summer, is that this season. Is there any any regrets at all about not keeping him here? He is he's a good player and I must say, I know him already a long time. I had him in the youth of, of PSV. And when before he, uh, he transferred to, to Manchester United, I'm really happy for him that he's progressing that, uh, that good. And I think it was the right step for him because he has to play on a regular basis. And yeah, he didn't do it over several years in Manchester United. Uh, then there's coming a point uh, you have to switch uh, and maybe a step back to get a step uh, uh, to uh, uh, to progress in the future, and um, so I think he's doing a good job. That is that's quite obvious. As whole Fulham is playing in a good way. Yeah, um, Eric. Before you came here, um, did you see a sort of 30-goal striker in Marcus Rashford? Because I don't think a United player scored 30 goals for sort of 10 years or so. And also, I just wondered if we could check on the contract situation, because obviously that's a sort of ongoing conversation about Rashford's contract with him being up next summer. Uh, I think I will, will not go back, but I think I said it uh, in the summer. Uh, that uh, the, uh, the question came from you, uh, one of you, and several times, if I believe if uh, Rashford or Martial, one of them could score 20-plus goals, and I said yes. I believe. I co uh, so find it back. And can I ask about the contract? Sorry, just a bit about Marcus's contract. Is there any movement on that? When we have news, we will uh, bring it immediately. Uh, last question in this section, Tom. Uh, Harry, this is the first of four games without Casemiro now. Um, how much thought have you given to have him? We already had more, many more games without Casemiro. Well, that's true. And it has what's happened in those games, because I think it's fair to say not all of them have gone particularly well. Yes. Can you? We did, quite, we did really well without Casemiro, uh, against Arsenal, against the two, against Leeds. Um, I remember some other games, I think we did really well also without Casemiro and also in the start of the season. Um, but I, I, I want to have Casemiro eh, available <laughs> eh, because eh, he, will, he has a huge impact on our game. Can you replace him like for like in, in that midfield? Is it just a case of slot someone in there or do you have to make allowances because he is a very unique player? Yes, but as I said, we um, also won many games without Casemiro. And um, so he's not available and then we have to do it with other players. Um, and it's about the 11 or let's say the squad who's available uh, to win this select. OK, one question on our Europa League draw against Sevilla. Hi, uh, yes, you've got Sevilla, who've obviously got a very, very good record in the Europa League. <clears throat> what, were you, what was your thought on that? Oh, back to Sevilla, and as you say, they have a very good record. You have to be aware of it. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be tough um, because they are really experienced in the uh, Europa League, win so many times. And so I don't know the, the team now in. Detail, uh, detail. I don't know, so I have to focus on that. But uh, for me, is uh, most important. Yeah, it's Fulham, and I don't look forward to to Sheffield because we have first we have an international break, and then we have uh, three Premier League games. So and there's much time to focus on that. But definitely, yeah, I think all the opponents who are coming uh, to this stage of the Europe League, they are strong. And it's about you have to be, play your best football if you want want to come true, and it's definitely the case if you face uh, Sevilla.